welcome back to another week of destroying Jim Cramer. Nah, we're just going to throw a little shade at him. <laughs> but we kind of got into a discussion about um, trying to figure out what he's worse at. Whether he's worse at saying sell or worse at saying buy. And then, uh, you know, we, we get into SGM a little bit here and it's like, well, we're kind of seeing a little bit of accumulation here and it's starting to form a nice wedge and a couple of key pivot points. So we've got some price action we can build on for SGM here. How's it uh, going over there to managing all that? Yeah. So, you know, it, it it's interesting. Most of the time when people think about Kramer, they focus in on, you know, the stuff that he tells you to buy and it going down. But, you know, we are also laser focused on what he's telling you not to buy. And, you know, and I think people, you know, know and remember kind of his crypto calls where he tells you not to buy crypto and then it goes up 500 percent. Yeah. But, you know, he's equally bad in, in all areas. So coming into, you know, yesterday, he's been hammering, you know, solar stocks, don't buy them. You know, all of the, uh, you know, high high short interest stocks, don't buy them. Then Tuesday night, he let off the show with a big list, like, you know, Upstart and Carvana and Beyond and all that stuff. So, I mean, we've had maybe our best two days ever. You know, I, I had a guy hit me up on Twitter saying something I can't repeat, but, <laughs> you know, assuming that I was getting crushed, I'm like, dude... You know, we're we're, we're 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 killing it here. You know, Jim's been on the stodgy, you know, Magnificent Seven and, you know, Nike and Chipotle and, and stuff like that. And, you know, the stocks he's telling you not to buy are going up like 25 percent in two days. I've noticed that, you know, it's, it's kind of um, it takes me back to where, like, I'm always telling people, you know, don't trust any mainstream analysts. Just learn how to read a chart and fundamentals will sometimes matter when you're, when you're taking long-term investments into play. But when it comes to trading, uh, that chart is your master. I mean, you follow what it tells you to do. It doesn't ever lie. It doesn't put a spin on anything. It just tells you how it is and what it was. And you know, when, when you get guys like Jim out there pounding the table, I'll oh, sell this, buy that. It's, it's just another monkey in a room to me. So it's like, I'm kind of like, whatever, I'm going to look at the chart and verify my information and, and more or less rationalize my trades. And then a while back, I kind of wrote an article about it, about the, the inner struggle of people trying to get past their, their discipline breaking point where they figure out how to, how to do you know, price action analysis very well, but they can't trade for it worth a darn because they can't pass the discipline process. And I, I put it as, as this. And, and I can kind of uh, align it with, you know, watching an analyst and seeing two analysts with different opinions and they're arguing back and forth um, in your own head, you can kind of put that as your argument of, you know, you should be in this position or you should be in this position or you should buy here, you should sell here. It kind of likens to having two people argue in the room and you're the third person who's rational watching the argument. You already know the outcome. You already see the writing on the wall. Their argument is futile. Uh, of course, one will win, one will lose, more or less, and sometimes compromise. But the point of but point of it is, the fact that they're even arguing about it is irrelevant because the data and the truth is going to show you the way. So you know when you start looking left on the chart, you see what happened. There's historical levels. You get all kinds of data you can crunch and figure out. Okay, well, what's my highest probability of a likely move from here to here? That's all you need to know. You're literally rationalizing outside of the argument. Once you can put yourself in that persona, you become a better trader. And it really, really kind of sticks. And it's um, kind of leads into, there's many complex things out there about trader psychology, but, um, and, and many kinds of complex things out there about how to analyze price action. Many complex things. I'm a keep it simple kind of guy. I'll go and learn all the complex stuff I can and then do everything I can to simplify it because I know simple is two things. It's fast, it's efficient, and it is accurate. So when it comes to being able to see through all the crap and all the different um, crazy technical uh, 
you know, um, indicators and all this stuff, I funnel down into the simplest thing possible. Same thing with uh, that state of discipline. I, I funnel it down to all the psychology comes to one point. It's really just three people in a room. One of them's rational and staying out of the fight. The other two are arguing back and forth. And that's what price action is anyway. It's an argument between two people. You know, it's, it should be worth this. It should be worth this. It's like watching uh, an old, uh, you know, Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny cart. <laughs> you know, it's just back yeah. and forth, back and forth. It's hunting season. You know, it's duck season. It's rabbit season. It's, it's, it's the same thing. It's just an argument. So if you stay rational and calm and, and just collect the data and make your own analysis, that's the important part. And then the discipline comes with well, it. And, and also, I mean, and here's the deal with Jim this year. So, you know, I, I, you know, I do have some people, I, oh, you know, you know, give me some crap on, on the overall performance. You know, we've had a year where seven stocks made up the bulk of the performance. And so all you had to do is pick those seven and ride them. Right. But in the whole idea of keeping it simple, don't fight the Fed. And if the Fed's got your back, rallies broaden out and turn into what rallies turn into. And now you're seeing all of those stocks that were bringing up the rear you know, now coming up, small caps, mid caps, the high short interest, all that stuff is moving. So, you know, a guy like Kramer can do very well in an environment where the seven biggest stocks are the only things moving. And, you know, and he'll appear to be smart, you know, magnificent seven, magnificent seven. Wow. You know, Jim Kramer, he's so great. Now that you've got a real rally on your hands and it's broadened out, you know, it, in some ways it's easier because you just throw a dart at a board, but in a lot of ways it's a lot harder. And I think a guy like Kramer is going to really struggle in this type of environment. Absolutely. I 100% agree. And, you know, it's... um like before when we had uh, what that almost 15 year long session of quantitative easing that just kept melting the market up uh you could literally throw a dart at a heat map and pick the winning stock uh, it was that simple um yeah it makes anybody look like a genius but then when when everything turned around for that big correction that we've had for, that took place over you know a year and a half two years and then uh made a big bounce well same situation um now you got people who were in their own mindset geniuses and people on the outside who look like geniuses and everybody's follow the leader. Once the market tipped over and became bearish for a spell, <laughs> everything fell apart. And that's, that's where that rationality needs to come into play because if you can't just focus on what's in front of you and trade the chart, you're going to be distracted by all that noise. And all those people who look like geniuses before are going to look like idiots. And that was kind of the, the, the key frame uh, phrase to to quote was like, you know, hey, just short everything Jim Cramer goes long on and you'll make money. <laughs> it's kind of kind of silly, but it seemed to work, you know, and uh, that was the, the biggest point of uh, making himself look like an idiot all of a sudden when conditions change. So now we're coming into another set of conditions that have changed. And um, I'll even kind of uh, pat myself on the back for looking at uh, Spy, for instance. Let me kick off these. Uh, HA candles and go into standard ones and then we'll hit spy. So the one thing I noticed on spy that was very important was this massive cup and handle that just, I've been talking about it for a long, long time since probably about March or April. And, um, it has just been curling up. This bear market was rough. That killed a lot of people's accounts. A lot of people, you know, literally went from trading for a living to going back to work. It sucks. That's just kind of fact of life, right? But you look left and you look further left. You've had correction after correction after correction. It happens. But this time we had just unmistakable rounding bottom at the top of a trend. It's a cup and handle. It's a continuation pattern. And for months now, we've been hearing people say the sky is falling, the bear market is coming, the recession, this, and, and all that stuff. I was probably feeling like the only one who was bullish in this break. And as soon as it broke that previous high and it just finished this move and made its all-time high in SPY, I was just like, well, kind of 
break in my arm, pat myself on the back for that because I've noticed this for a long time. And hell, you can go and look left on you know a monthly chart even and find that it's it's the same old thing. It's just one big ass bull trend with a bunch of corrections. So. And my, uh, just, just uh, to interrupt for a minute, you should be patting yourself on the back. I mean, I don't know if you spend time on on FinTwit, but there are a lot of bears. Yeah, you know, and and a lot of bears coming into yesterday. Um, I, you know, I got to figure a lot of margin calls today for some of these people. <laughs> you know, and and uh, when we saw this big candle, I mean, that was more of like one of the mother of all short squeezes to boot. But uh, then we get into the fact that uh, a lot of, um, you know, the uh, um, institutional investors were like midday, they shorted it down right to this liquidity level. And then they bought the crap out of it right before the meeting. And that just took off. So combination of a bunch of net long and a short squeeze, dude, that was just a mother of all bars. And yeah, you know, it was just, the writing was on the wall for me. I slid the box over because I, I kind of got it out of the way because I hate having the background of my short-term screens turn gray on me. But um, originally, you know, this was the expected move. And this is just very typical. You get a primary, you got a one-for-one, one, a pullback, and then you get the extension that gives you half the move. And it gave us half the move. Uh, there was also a couple other things that I drew on the chart to, to make it exactly from one point to the next. It all lined up. It was just, you know, I can't ignore that. The chart didn't lie. Everyone and their mother was saying, the sky is falling. <laughs> and here I am being the bull. So, you know, um, I guess uh, they say a broken clock can be right twice a day too. But when when you look at the, the history, it, it tells you how to be right more than twice a day. <laughs> so I'll just say that. Um, I don't hang out on, on FinTwit, but I do, I do hang out a little bit on StockTwits. And I've kind of poked around at this thing for a long time now as well on there. And, you know, I've, I've kind of been ahead of this as much as I can be. And man, even uh, this was just a glorious measure move in spite of the gap too. It went right to that target. But, you know, um, you get guys out there that are just kind of following the leader when it's just one, one duck after another following mama duck. <laughs> What's going to happen? Well, they're going to get caught off sides at some point and market conditions are always changing. If you're not ahead of them, you know, you're behind them. Um, yeah. There's no other way to say it. And then, you know, as you get, Gordon Gecko said, if you're not on the inside, you're on the outside. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. The and best we, analyst of all time. Exactly. And, you know, the, the guy, um, I know other analysts who, uh, you know, have, have been like institutional traders for a long time. Sometimes I've, I've known people who will just literally sit on their hands through all the chop and all the crap, and they will literally only trade events like earnings or Fed announcements or, you know, some sort of political move or whatever, a war invasion, what have you. That's all they trade. And they just sit and read the paper at their desk from, you know, nine to two, whenever they're done, and go home. And, you know, they're, they're working for these firms for a long time, some of them. And, uh, you know, um, all the other junior traders around them are just trading their asses off and treading water. But, you know, they kind of get to that point where they ask the question, well, why is this guy still here if he just sits here and reads the paper half the day? Well, because when he makes a trade, he makes one or two a year and he kills it so much he doesn't have to work for the rest of the year. That's great, you know? Yeah. yeah. So... You know, outside of that, I mean, I can go and, and even kind of, you know, blow a little bit more um, kudos my way when I go look at the, my move with Snapchat. I didn't think anybody was bullish on Snap. And here we are pushing $17. Um, that was easy. Look left. There's your weekly candle. Once we eat the base of that candle, we're going to rework it. Pretty simple. My target's 23 bucks. I'll take my profit then. Thank you. But I've been long mm -hmm. since 952 and I'm still holding. So, you know. No one expected that. There's no writing on the wall. The only catalyst I could really find is some of the ad revenue moving out of X and into into Snapchat. Whatever, it's all speculative. But the chart told me what to do, so I didn't have to care about that stuff. But you know, you just you become a technical anal analyst, and um, eventually you get really good at it if you stick with it. So I'm sticking with it, and it's doing me well. As you should. Amen. Um. Want to get into uh, probably from two days ago 
the lightning round and then uh, the, the more recent lightning round, he only mentioned like one thing and he got a couple calls to boot on those. And it was just one he said to hold, the others he said, oh, sell, 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 and this and that. But uh, one of the first companies he talked about on the lightning round was uh, this company called Cayman. And it's K A M N. And yeah, we, we didn't do anything on this one because I've never heard of it, but you're saying it makes helicopters? Yeah, they make really unique helicopters. Uh, it's a twin rotor design. There's no tail rotor involved, but it's not like a Chinook where it's one big rotor in the front and a big rotor in the rear. They're side by side and they're angled against each other and counter rotating. So the characteristics of flight um, is kind of a different scenario compared to uh, standard tail rotor type helicopters where often pilots would explain them as. Um, trying to uh, balance on a basketball when you're flying them or when you're hovering them and landing. But uh, the, the Cayman K-Max is kind of a neat helicopter. Uh, it's, it's unique. It's It's got some quirks. Um, it's used in a lot of industrial stuff. I know they're used um, in uh, firefighting. They use them in logging. They use them in construction, mining, in remote areas. They're very, very useful. Um, I know there were some contracts, um, independent contractors flying supplies around all over Iraq and all the uh, Middle Eastern theater and stuff like that. Very useful machines. They're very um, unique. They do take a slightly different uh, set of skills to, to operate. So there's some you know, uh, proprietary training involved with them, just with anything else. But if you've ever seen one up close, you'd wonder why, aren't, why there aren't a million of these in the sky. They're really that good. Uh, I really like them. Um, Jim was actually kind of saying something about this and saying, I really like the company and they're, they're doing lots of great things. And I, I kind of agree with them. I mean, I throw him a kudos for this one. Um, he said, you know, this was on his buy, buy, buy list and uh, past couple of days, it's very good. Now it hit the top right. of my mind. I'm glad list. we didn't short it then. Yeah. However, it might give you a nice pullback soon. And if we get this. Yeah, I mean, it doji, does look double toppy, but. It does. And it's extended that two for one. It's right at the top of the sucker. So I think we might be able to get a short after after all now. Uh, Jim got it right for a couple of days, but um, at some point, this has got to pull back. Um, looking left, you know, it's got that look where, sure, this could be, you know, a little bit of a rounding bottom reversal. But unless it breaks that previous high, it's likely to pull back here. So I'm kind of watching this one for a short myself. Um, the bull target's already been met and nailed. It was really easy to see. But uh, for this one, um, you know, if it can't break this uh, 2450-ish area at the top here and, and starts to look a little weak, uh, you might see a pullback first to about 2350 or maybe even down here to 2250-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's kind of on the wall. Um, can it outsize this move? It sure can. So this whole thing can become primary and it can fly past that previous resistance and look at what's behind it. So... Definitely be careful if you're going to short it here, because if it gets loose out of this, sure, it'll eat this entire candle, but it's already eaten half. So we'll see where this tips. It'll either give us a pullback to short and then maybe get long in, because I like the company. I might even start um, adding some size into this for long-term stuff, personally. And, uh, you know, target up here around $32, $33 for about half the, the trend from before. That's a long time, though. I like trading short-term stuff, but I like investing in long-term swings as well, so... That's looking like it could set up to be a decent long-term swing eventually. Short-term, yeah. maybe give a, a good short pullback and then ride the trend, baby. So, yeah, I mean, I kind of throw him a kudo here, but um, at the same time, if you if you did buy into that, you might consider taking some profit or take some risk off uh, hedging the position if you know how to trade some options, you know, maybe sell some covered calls outside, uh, you know, 0.3 delta and all that stuff. Maybe consider even swinging it back in, uh, averaging, whatever you got to do. You know, there's there's a strategy for all of it. But uh, whatever makes sense to you to, to trade uh, just tells me I know where the technical analysis is pointing. So, you know, definitely throw him a kudo, but half a kudo because this is going to pull back soon, I think. <laughs> just likely to. Um, the next one he talked about was a drone company. And I, I like flying little drones and stuff. They're kind of fun, but... Uh, I see they, they have a huge use as well. And this is a company that manufactures drones. AVAV, I think, is the ticker here. And um, yeah, we, we didn't do anything with that because I've never heard of that one either. So Yeah, and it's looking a little top-heavy too, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing this nice parabolic trend. It's kind of hit its previous high and rejected up there around uh, 144-ish. Um, this is on his buy-buy-buy list. He was talking about it the other day. And um, 
damn, dude, that thing's made some parabolic moves. But uh, if it can't get packed back above the mean here or eat this candle, I think we might have a good short on our hands in the near future if I'm looking at this right. Just uh, I might put yet another pivot on this just to kind of watch because it might be a good scalp for the bull side too. But split the difference. You know, 133 would be like outsized from 130. Okay. Uh, if it rejects up there, maybe we get a quick short, uh, pullback, quick short, whatever. But in the long run, I mean, this thing is like, it's got some massive price action behind it. So, you know, um, it's pretty much met this target here. It's met that target there. Not my most favorite uh, chart to look at for trading, but um, in the meantime, it'll give you some little short-term trades, I'm sure. And this is pretty parabolic in general anyway. So look for maybe mean reversion of this bar. Give us maybe another short back to the mean and possibly even a little bear trend before it picks up to be bullish again. Who knows? I don't know the company very well. And, you know, again, I don't like this chart for like uh, you know, trading long term, but I think it's got some good scalps in it. Eh, not the most interesting chart to me, but. No, I mean, it, it didn't, it didn't do anything for me. But hey, you know, he got the, he got the bottom right. So he actually called buy, buy, buy on this one. And you know, for a little while it worked. So we'll see where it goes next. But, you know, certainly don't let, uh, let FOMO keep you biased in, in being a permable on this thing. It certainly takes some time to trade it. But um, yeah, I'll give him one more kudo. That was a pretty nice move. Um, next one he talked about, and this is, this is where things get a little, little interesting. He was talking about, um, uh, that GE healthcare, GEHC. And this is starting to become a chart that I would, you know, actually trade. Uh, this garbage back here was rough, but, uh, he was pounding the table bye 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 on this one. It certainly got some, some good, um, looks, but, uh. At some point, it's got to come to a head, and I think it's kind of right about there. If I'm looking at this, about 76 and some change seems to be about half the mean of this whole move here uh, on the high side. Might see some consolidation here. Can it continue to go higher? Uh, yeah, higher? I mean, I, I think you've got to. I mean, this is one, two, three, four, you know, five massive up bars in a row. Yeah, it's just running so i mean it's got to pull back at some point you know and there's a couple levels to look at you know I, I like drawing just pivots on this type of stuff until it starts to work out into some measured move stuff but um i guess you could say it's made this and a retracement and hit the target so most traders are going to be probably looking to take profit in this anyway but looking at the weekly i mean it's starting to resemble a chart i might consider trading sooner or later once i start to see some more price action because that hasn't been around for that long you know what i mean it just opened here what december of uh, 22 yeah it's got some time you know we don't have enough history to really pick off some clean levels on this thing but it keeps pounding the table and saying bye so you know um, there's going to be some hype involved here so watch out because there will be some traders to take profit from this and uh i'd love to see him run this whole bar back down <laughs> That is a heck of a trend. Yeah. It'll take some interest on, on from uh, me pretty soon here. I think it's starting to look like a chart that I would even consider trading. So give it some time. You know, it might take uh middle of next year before I start really swinging this thing. But yeah, okay. Give them a kudo. You, you bought one and, and made a win. Um, RDNT was last week, so kind of revisit. Yeah, that was a while back. And then it was another one he traded or he called out last week that um, during the beginning of the week tanked, but I can't remember which one it was. Uh, oh, was it? Um, I think it was RDNT. Let me look at it real quick. We didn't have much mentioned today, so we can, we can go and pick off a couple of. Uh, let's look back at them. So. He was saying bye 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 this one last week, and it's it kind of um, had this pull back and then you know picked off. Did good, made its measured move. Um, now I'm kind of like, okay, well, it did kind of the same thing. Spied it, it gave half the expected move and and stopped. So I'd love to see this pull back, but it can certainly you know continue running higher. So it's starting to look a little more interesting for trading. And um, you know, there's your cup, and there's your handle. Um, 
got half her whole move. Can go higher, can go lower, but I'm going to start looking for a trade probably in the next couple of days on this to see if it rejects this high and pulls back or keeps running. So this is definitely becoming an interesting one for me to trade. That might um, might be intriguing for SGM. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's not not the kind of thing we look for. I mean, what what where we want to be positioned now is, you know, I want to be short the large cap tech right. where people are pulling money out of and, you know, and be long the smaller high short interest, those types of names. I mean, we're we're probably going to take some profits today because we're yeah we're up, it's... Um, we're up two and a half percent nice. right now on an NAV basis. So I mean, I got to take some profits. Yep. You know, give it a haircut before it gives you a haircut. <laughs> yep. If you don't take your profits, somebody else will. That's right. I'm I'm quick to do that. <laughs> There's got to be somebody on the other side of the trade. Uh. Yeah. Someone's going to want to buy uh, Carvana up, what is that, 18%? Yeah, my and gosh. And Edge up 17 <laughs> That is freaking nuts. You know, I never thought Carvana would become a main stock like that, but boy, it's starting to make some moves. And everybody sees this, I'm sure, on a weekly chart, you know. It, it, it's got that uh, inverse head and shoulders look, although it's a little well, a little And, and also, headers. that was one of the ones Tuesday night that Jim pounded the table on to stay away from, so... Yeah, so everybody's buying it. Thank and you, Jim. Weekly candles kind of stack up to uh, move maybe even as high as 130. I like that one. This thing could be a definite long for a while. Um, let's dig into it a little bit, I think. Let's see. I put a pivot right in there at the bottom of this range. I like to split ranges when it comes to these big trends like this. And you can see there's two splits in this one. There's one here and one here. But um, if we're looking short term, I'm very similar to my snapchat trade i mean this is right at resistance of previous high so if it's going to go higher it'll do it soon and the setup is going to be coming out pretty quick so looking at the primary move it gave half back it hit that number and now we're back to resistance so if it breaks this previous high this is this can be a definite good long so yeah jim told you to stay away <laughs> Big to differ yeah. i like this one Let's see if it gives us a target, though. Let's see if we can find one real quick here. Uh, just previous high, 57 bucks for the short term. And then if it breaks that, yeah, we can just start climbing the ladder on this thing. But that's quite parabolic. So, you know, be beware that it can pull back on you just a little bit. Um, it's certainly made a nice little one for one. I'm going to mark this out because this is important here. If you don't mind me taking time to draw, I'm going to draw three of them. Anytime I do that, I just size the move up, figure out where it's expected to go by dragging some boxes around on my chart. We're outside of the one for one here. So, you know, give it a one and a half to about 56 bucks. That takes us right back to, what was it, that previous high? Yep. And if it breaks half of that, give us the whole move to like, you know, $59 and some change. Even though it's parabolic, um, that old saying goes, the market can remain... Uh, you know, um, irrational much longer than most people can remain liquid. So, yeah. Yep. Definitely keep keep your tabs on this thing because it, it is uh, getting all kinds of uh, insights on all the major uh, social media outlets there. You know, you got Twitter and uh, you got um, stock twits and fin twits and everybody talking about this on Reddit too, I bet. So. Yeah, this thing could really get some size. Let's see it move. And, you know, Jim saying sell it or stay away from it. <laughs> I say trade it. Exactly. Um, he had another one he was talking about on the sell, sell, sell list over here. Um, CL, Signa Group. And there was another one after that, too. Or, not CL, CI. Sorry. I CI. Wrong. Yeah, we stayed away from that on the long side. I mean, we had so much, you know, that list Tuesday night was just pure gold. Yeah. You know, we didn't want to mess it up with a healthcare name. No. And he was saying sell, sell, sell on this one. Which, right. And he's been right. 
I mean, I think they you know, they had some merger announcement that got called off. Uh, so I mean, I you know I don't know enough about that type of stuff to mess with it. Good point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, you know that that's when you know being able to read charts doesn't help you a whole heck of a lot because there's you right. know there's fluid news out there that could be changing on a dime. And this is this is one of those equities where you know yeah you're right technical analysis wouldn't really give you much of an edge on this one. Um, you know, and that's just, uh, I can, that's not an interesting chart for me to trade, but if anything, I'd maybe say, okay, it can return to me and hit 283 again. But, uh, one, one news headline can absolutely flip your lid on that thing. And yeah, I don't want to. Well, right. And, and if whatever caused that thing to gap up is now no longer valid, then, you know, as far as I'm concerned, look out below. Right. Return to me. Yeah, about 282 to 2, 280 would be a good reasonable pullback for what it did. So I mean, that was a hell of a gap up. Look at this thing. Jeez. Yep. Um, I would I would more lean on instead of sell, sell, sell. I'd say stay away from it if you're going to try and invest in this thing for a little while until this shakes out. But uh, if, if old Jim's saying um, sell, 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 you know, <laughs> there's some buyers here. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh yeah, you just you got to know what's going on in the news. Yeah. And again, I think they were trying to merge with Humana or something like that, and I think it fell through. So you just you need to wrap your head around what's going on if you're going to trade that. Right. You know, and unless some other buyer comes in and gets in a bidding war about it, then you know this thing is like, yeah, I wouldn't mess with it. I wouldn't trade it with Bill Gates' money. <laughs> Um, another one he said, F FSLR, he was saying to stay away from, and uh, that thing's kicking. Well, he, he's been telling you to stay away from all the semis. So, you know, Solar Edge is our second best performer. Yeah. And I know we got another semi in there somewhere. Oh, wrong chart. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so much green, I can't even see. But uh, he, he's been telling people to stay away from the semis. And this one, I mean, on, on the weekly, um, it's got potential to make a bear move, but it's holding pretty well at the support level. So, um, well, know. the I mean, the whole thing with anything clean energy is those companies are so reliant on interest rates. Right. So everything clean energy, solar, charging stations, all that stuff got crushed this year with higher interest rates. Now that people are focusing on lower rates, I mean, this stuff's going insane. Right. That's a heck of an outsized move. I mean, it, it even beat a one for one on the two hour chart by far. Um, I put this uh, on my chart this morning, these two boxes here, and um, I looked away. <laughs> and yeah. Totally missed a hell of a bull move and even further. So. This thing could really continue to kick butt with the lower rates. And yeah, you're right. Um, they did get beat to crap on the outside of, uh, you know, higher interest rates. But now that things are starting to turn, they might uh, at least catch a, a nice little reprieve from, you know, being shorted into oblivion. Um, previous high here, about 167.50. Uh, I think there would probably be some bag holders here. So maybe put a liquidity zone up there around that level. Check the candle before it. Yeah, I mean, you know, for right now, people are thinking, you know, aggressive cuts next year. Um, Fed saying three. I think the market's pricing in more than that. That's going to be a battle next year. But, you know, for now, and again, I mean, I wouldn't be chasing the solars right now. And again, we're going to, you know, we're going to cut some of our exposure for the close. But um you know, certainly the environment is more conducive to anything clean energy now. Yeah. And, you know, and, and hopefully it'll all set up. So when my go woke, go broke ETF comes out, I can short these all over again. You know, speaking of that, um, there was a meme that went around the other day and I, I just caught it yesterday. Um, oh, what the heck was that guy's name? Hold on. Some big uh, athlete. <laughs> I don't keep up on athletic stuff i'm just not a baller draymond green lebron james uh jordan michael jordan 
Oh, what did you I, that I missed? What did Jordan do? He said, and I quote, "I am not saving your woke brand to Nike." And uh, that looks nice. like an interesting uh, one to go in that portfolio. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Nike will probably be uh, probably be well represented in there. Oh, I'm sure. I I always got a kick at it when I was you know seeing the bear market kick in. One of my favorite shorts was my uh, Nike on the top here. And, um, well, and and we're short Nike and S Jim also because uh, Jim at one point Jim came out positive on I mean he has over and over again yeah but that Foot Locker <laughs> you know it's like two of his dolls and um, now he's you know, kind of banging the table on that uh, yeah it picked up some hype but yeah I could see it being a nice short pretty soon and uh, you know you got guys like Michael Jordan who are still very relevant uh, saying I ain't gonna save your woke company well hey <laughs> you know. That might be a good opportunity to short that thing down to a buck oh five there. Looks good to me. Yep. Cool. I'm gonna keep that one in mind. I might make some uh some really nice options trades on that later on. That would be a nice little mean reversion from this previous trend. So makes sense to me. I like it. I think I might short that one myself. And uh just just to kinda give another note out there, we're not financial advisors in any means. We we'll tell you what we'll do, sure. But <laughs> you know, you have to make your own decisions on that stuff. Do your own DD, please. Make sure you do your own yeah. due diligence due diligence, and make, um, you know, appropriate trades thereafter. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, kind of a classic pattern I like to outline, too. Um, I see these happen right down to a five-second level as well. This is a simple one. Um, you get, you know, a descending megaphone pattern here. You get that broadening formation. Um, you get... The middle of it which is about a uh, right here with a regression line i like to add and then you just take your block and lay it up from its point of rejecting the center and line it up with another one hey there's your one for one bull target it's outside of it now so uh, i might even stretch that a little bit to equal but Close enough. I'm going to watch this thing for a pullback, and I think it's going to hit the wall pretty soon here, just looking at it. That's pretty bar pretty parabolic and ready for a pullback. So I do like short and Nike almost as much as I like short and GM. Good times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of automotive, did you see Ford? No, I haven't been watching. What happened with Ford? Oh, man. Yesterday, it ran like the wind. Um, did very well. You know, and that whole uh, oh, wow. FMC today it's running like the wind, and uh, you know, twelve bucks. Thank God, we weren't short board. that. I think it'll likely pull back when it hits twelve, and you know, stash it back to eleven fifty again. And it's, well, I it's, mean, uh, it's it's bumping up against the two hundred day moving average here. Right, eight That's eight right. cents away from the two hundred day moving average, so that'll be interesting. It's ready for something to happen. So yeah, I mean, it's you know, made its mean reversion on a daily chart just about so. Yeah, right around 12, 12, 15, I would say that might be a good pullback opportunity. But, yeah, I was surprised to see that thing moving. And um, I glanced at it a couple times yesterday, but I was I was trading the crap out of the NQ. I was focused, and then I scalped the hell out of SPY options, too. I, I rarely trade zero-day options, but yesterday it was glorious. Pulled off some, uh, you know, uh, like 600% returns on some really low-priced uh, options on SPY. But, uh I was a little bit divided to really take a position on Ford, but I got a target right around 12, 12, 20, somewhere in that neighborhood for a quick pullback. And I might give that a quick short, but other than that, comparatively to GM, you know, um, same kind of thing. It, it ran up to a point of resistance and um, on my other account, you probably see my big ass red block here with the red block below. I'm still waiting for it to hit the bottom there. So something's going to happen with GM sooner or later. And, you know, when it goes, the big three goes. So maybe Ford will go with it. Who knows? <laughs> but automotive stuff, it's like I, I've been focused on other stuff, and uh, I'll come back to it. But uh, one thing I can say for sure, when I start to teach people how to trade options, I start with Ford. Ford is probably one of the most glorious um, opportunities to trade options on or learn your complex option strategies on. And it's so forgiving. The time decay on those contracts is like nil. And... Um, you get a lot of forgiveness for making a mistake on those. So one, two, when you get it right, you make some pretty killer trades on options with Ford. So I like to use that as my, my development bed for teaching people how to trade option strategies, both complex and simple. So um, 
looking at that from an ETF standpoint, I mean, you could probably find, you know, the same kind of thing when you trade a leverage ETF, like uh, SGM. If Jim starts pounding the table saying, buy forward here, you know we're going to short it. So. Oh, yeah. Well, right on, man. It's been kind of a, a slow week for Jim. I mean, he only had a few things in the lightning rounds he's had for the past couple of days. And, um, you know, he's more kind of leaning on uh, getting back in the swing of um, top ticking some of the Mag 7s and, uh, you know, talking trash about the chips and stuff. What's next? I think next week we're going to see some some swings take shape and the Santa Rally eventually. We, has we, to we will see. I mean, you know, my Christmas gift was his list Tuesday night. Yeah. Uh, you know, he doesn't have to give me anything more for the rest of the year and I'll be happy. But I mean, if, if, if he's got something up his sleeve, uh, you know, tonight, tomorrow into year end, that'll be great. Yeah. I got to wonder if, uh, if, if the execs over there at CNBC are kind of steering him towards, um, you know, being a little bit more on his toes about his analysis stuff. But, uh, then again, <laughs> yeah, he, good, good, good luck with that. He has his good days and his bad. So, you know, yeah. I think. More than anything, it's all about that soundboard, and um, I went and, and got one. I got one, uh, you know, maybe two things on here that I'll play for Jim. Like, you know, when he gets it right, yeah, it's a joke. But uh, then I, I also I know the uh, the genesis of his soundboard. That was that was an idea he took from somebody else. But you know, I, I, I guess everything we do are ideas we take from someone else. So true. Everybody's thought true. about something at some point. But um, yeah. I forget the analyst he took that from, and I can't remember. Um, but yeah, he he did kind of go, "Hey man, I like that. I'm gonna do the soundboard thing too." And he ran with it because his soundboard is like bigger than anybody I've ever known. <laughs> it's massive. Yeah. There are thousands of buttons on that thing. How does he know which ones to push anymore? Eventually, he's gonna have to forget all that stuff because he's getting up there. So, <laughs> you know, uh, it's entertaining. Sure, you get the, all the sound effects and stuff, and you know, it makes it makes things a lot more fun. Um, I know that there's a lot of different. Uh, you know, trading streams out there that you can watch, whether they're on a, a network or on YouTube or whatever. And a lot of them have soundboards. So, you know, it's kind of a, yeah, it's fun. It keeps it light and entertaining, but we just like to throw shade because it's, it's, it's our entertainment. You know? <laughs> so we don't need a soundboard here, but we can have one if you want, you know, just hit me up in the comments. Maybe we'll add some stuff, but uh, in the near future, eventually I want to do something. Uh, maybe, maybe we do something like Jim. We just do like a call-in thing where we have people comment live on. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about that the last time. I mean, I, I, I would love that. That'd be pretty fun. Uh, maybe in the coming weeks, or maybe, maybe make that a New Year's resolution when we start doing some live stuff and, and start talking to people out there because um, we, we want to hear what you have to say. So you know, at least comment yeah, with us anyway. Cool. We, we enjoy feedback. We enjoy being able to help people. And that's that's all we're after. You know, we love helping people. And uh, our hearts are in the same place. That's why, you know, uh, Matthew and I kind of eventually came together. You know, our hearts are in the same place. We're kind of aligned with helping helping the masses. And um, I know at one point Jim might have been that way too, but I, I kind of wonder if he's now just, uh, you know, uh, doing it for a paycheck. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. It's, it's a working man's type of thing. Whatever. Yeah. I'll leave the guy alone for that, but uh, you know, uh, as far as uh, his callouts go, yeah, we'll keep uh, we'll keep picking at him. We'll keep the scrutiny on him tight, and um, I'm gonna start picking off a few other analysts here pretty soon. I'm gonna start uh, not just throwing shade at Jim in, in particular, but there's a couple other I got my eye on, and I know you know who I'm talking about. So <laughs> I'm not gonna say their names until I know it. I'm not gonna get sued, but <laughs> yeah, there's a couple that have made some bonehead moves, and. Um, you know, particularly it's the big bank ones. Uh, you know, you get like uh, City saying something, or you get JPM saying something, and I I scrutinize the crap out of things when they start upgrading and downgrading stuff. And I might make a show out of that where I just start calling off all the analysts, uh, you know, upgrade downgrade list, and start spanking on those guys. That'd be fun keeping those guys on their toes. Oh, that would be fun as well. And then on the outside, um, you know, I've got a, a couple things coming out soon. I'm going to start looking into um, one thing I used to do. I used to park money in a lot of high high yield dividend stocks when they hit the bottom of their uh, their sector rotation and bounce them up and start making some uh, uh, wheel trades on them if they're optionable, if they've got enough volume on them stuff. Um, I'm going to start looking at some of those, and I want to try and get them out before the end of the year so we can, you know, get some positions on to have the – the longer than a year and a day it keeps it so you can get your uh, long-term you know tax rate on it instead of your short-term tax rate on it whatever 
Um, I'm going to start putting that together here in the next week or two and get that out as quick as I can before the end of the year. So there's a couple of uh, beaten down high yield and, uh, you know, dividend stocks out there that are that are worth trading or worth taking a look at. So we'll get that list out there too. Well, awesome. I think that's about it for uh, this week. I think we can, uh, you know, let uh, let Jim have a weekend off and um, see if he comes back Monday or Tuesday with some some more stuff for us to pick over. I hope so. I need to reload. Yes, sir. It's going to be fun. <laughs> but at least Christmas is paid for, and that's that's the important part. That's definitely paid for. Exactly. For well. Uh, see you guys next. See you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that, and uh, hit the bell. You know, get an announcement when we post stuff. We're trying to make this a regular thing. Release it at two o'clock on Thursdays if we can, and uh, it just takes me a little bit of editing to kind of smooth things out, make sure you know all the sound levels are right and all that stuff. And uh, it takes me a little bit of work to do. And one of these days, I'm going to have to hire an editor. But uh, at any rate. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your support. And uh, be sure to reach out to us in the comments. You know, we, we will respond. And, um, you know, you can find both of us on Twitter. Uh, or, I'm sorry, X. Uh, I'm just Scalp at J on there. And uh, we've got Tuttle Capital here. So, you know, hit us up. we got lots of stuff for you. Thanks again. We'll see you next week.